one of the core points of Pokemon as a franchise is that you can grow attachments to these creatures that are, of course, digital and virtual and not entirely real, but, you know, you suspend your disbelief and these creatures become real to you. And once you have attachments with these monsters, then you can uh, bring them throughout the various games that you play. Ever since Generation 3, Pokemon generally had made a big deal about how, hey, you can bring these Pokemon with you. The Pokemon that you had in Hoenn can come with you to Sinnoh and Unova and so on and so forth. But in Generation 8, they decided to make a break from that and limit the Pokedex size. Now, there was a lot of fur about that decision when it first was brought to light. And even after the two DLC updates, people are still dissatisfied because there are quite a few Pokemon that are still left out of the Pokedex and are unable to be brought into Sword and Shield. At the end of the day, I don't know exactly how Game Freak is going to work around this in the future, and I don't see the national decks including all Pokemon in the future. However, I won't complain if it does. I think that it is nice to be able to bring a Pokemon into a game. In any case, uh, the decision to call the Pokedex has affected the competitive Pokemon in the sense that you aren't able to play with a bunch of Pokemon in competitive and since these games exist for three, four years of the life cycle, then it may be three, four years before we will see certain Pokemon again. And that has certainly been true for the Pokemon on today's list. Today's list is going to be talking about the Pokemon that I miss most that used to be in the game that are not anymore and how, how I hope that they come back in Scarlet and Violet. So I want to lay down a few ground rules for this list as we get started here. Uh, the first rule in considering how much I miss a Pokemon is how much do I like that Pokemon, right? Is this one of the Pokemon I like a lot, or is this a Pokemon that I don't really care as much about? Uh, a Pokemon will get more or fewer points in my head, and these points are completely arbitrary by the way, but they're going to get more or fewer points in my head depending on how much I like them as a Pokemon design-wise. And then the second question is how long have they been gone? Uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl brought back a bunch of Pokemon, of course everything through Generation 4 was brought back, and you can play with those Pokemon in the BDSP metagame, however that metagame sort of uh, lived and died within a couple of months and now nobody really cares about it so it doesn't really count to me and also that metagame was so limited that the Pokemon didn't really get to take up roles outside of that strange metagame where they weren't able to be fully integrated into the main roster with all the rest of the Pokemon and the number three question I have is how fun are they to play with Right? Sometimes I don't like a Pokemon's design as much, but I really like their playstyle, and I'm going to take that into consideration. So let's get into this list. At number 10, we have Mega Beedrill. Now Mega Beedrill, of course, may not ever return again if they don't bring back Mega Evolutions, but I didn't want to include Beedrill for two reasons. First of all, Beedrill was in BDSP, but more importantly, Beedrill just is not a usable Pokemon. Right? Butterfree can quiver dance up and has sleep powder with compound eyes, and Beedrill has nothing going for it. Beedrill is such a bad Pokemon. But Mega Beedrill really gave it a new role to play and brought it all the way from being completely unsalvageable to actually being a pretty scary threat. And so Be Mega Beedrill, I really liked how it played. I really enjoyed the adaptive really boosted U-turns, just being able to come in, force the opponent out, switch out, go, go into another Pokemon, and then have them be caught in this cycle of current, constantly being threatened by the Pokemon that they're facing, right? I really think that makes Mega Beedrill a lot of fun. And of course, we may never see Megas again, like I said, but I really do miss Mega Beedrill a lot, and I do hope that Megas come back. And this will be the only Mega on this list. All Megas, of course, have been missing since Sword and Shield. And I do hope they come back, but Mega Beedrill will sort of represent all of them as a whole. Number 9 on the list is Manaphy. And of course, Manaphy, for anybody who played BDSP, knows that Manaphy was terrorizing that metagame for a while, until they got banned. And Manaphy is a very strong Pokemon in limited metagames where there are not as many checks to it. 
However, when you get to Sword and Shield, or Sun and Moon, I suppose, because it isn't in short Sword and Shield, uh, a more fleshed out metagame, there are actually quite a few checks for Mana Fee to the point where Mana Fee is not quite as viable as you might think when looking at uh, its moveset. And I love Mana Fee's Pokemon. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. And I think it's really adorable. And this set here that we have listed, I think is my favorite set. Uh, if you're going to give me Tail Glow, I'm just going to want to click buttons. I don't want to have to worry about rest hydration sets. I just want to set up and start sleeping. And so you can see that it's running a Wakan Berry. I wonder uh, how that will change in the next generation. If Manaphy comes back, there may be new held items. I may even want to run Heavy Duty Boots. Uh, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. But Manaphy, very fun Pokemon. I want to see it back in the main game again. At number eight, we've got Dodrio. Now, Dodrio, of course, is not a very good Pokemon. But in terms of the Kanto birds, it's probably my favorite. I really like Dodrio. And I think that it's really fun to just click Choice Band and Brave Birds with Dodrio. And also, I like the move Thrash on Dodrio. Uh, Thrash is a normal type Outrage, and Dodrio has the ability Tangled Feet, which means that it has increased evasion when it is confused. The very gimmicky <laughs> ability, and you don't really ever get to see it used because Dodrio is so frail and takes so much recoil from Stealth Rock and Brave Bird that it often dies before it can even get off a couple of thrashes to get confused. But I still think it's pretty funny, and it is decently powerful in the lower tiers where Dodrio is seen. Now of course this is not a BDSP Pokemon, but I want to bring it into the main games so I can get Jump Kick back because it did not have Jump Kick in BDSP, and that meant that it was walled by a lot of Steel types, unfortunately. Number 7 is another Pokemon that was seen heavily in the BDSP metagame, and that's Donphan. Donphan is a great Pokemon, has lots of utility. It can knock off, it can rapid spin, it can set stealth rocks, it even has Ice Shard as a priority move. And uh, it really is pretty powerful, even nowadays. The sturdy ability, if you could give it heavy duty boots, it would be able to live a hit guaranteed and mess up your opponent in a lot of ways. So really, I think Donphan has a lot of potential. Uh, when it comes back, and I'm eagerly waiting its return. Uh, previous sets used to run bulky, but I like to run a more offensive Dawn fan, especially with the rapid spin buff, which is another thing that I really want to see Dawn fan be able to play around with. All right, at this point, we're done with all the Pokemon that uh, were in BDSP, and now we're going to talk about Pokemon that were last seen in Sun and Moon specifically. At number six, we got Florges. Florges is a Pokemon that really, I believe, would benefit a lot from increased coverage and support moves. As it stands, Florges does not really have the best move pool, and I think if Florges' move pool were increased, then she'd see a lot more uh, usage. As it stands, the set you see on the screen is probably the best set, and it's not really an exciting one, but I do think that Florges is a pretty unique Pokemon, and I really like the pre-evos a lot. I think that if it got a, a new ability as well, one that could be used in singles, even if it were as boring as Natural Cure, that, that would help a lot as well. At number 5, I've got my favorite wall breaker in Hoopa Unbound. Hoopa Unbound is a great Pokemon because it's so strong that it comes in and it just clicks buttons and it gets kills right and left. Great for breaking stall down because it's very difficult for any Pokemon to switch into Choice Band Hyperspace Fury. And Drain Punch is great for keeping some form of longevity on this guy. Hoopa, great Pokemon. Really love to see it. And I hope that it comes back. Now, a Pokemon that I think will almost certainly come back is Delphox. With Scarlet and Violet being set in Spain, right next to France, and France is Kalos, I do believe the Gen 6 starter should be making a return. And Delphox is my favorite starter from that trio. I really do like how Delphox plays, especially because Delphox usually ends up in the RU or the NU tiers, which I do quite enjoy. I particularly enjoy the Choice Scarf set. There are a few sets for Delphox, and I think that Delphox probably would prefer to run Heavy Duty Boots nowadays. In Gen 7, uh, it was usually running a Firing Z set, but Choice Scarf was also ran sometimes, and I do enjoy the Choice Scarf to be able to outspeed a lot of things that Delphox usually wouldn't be able to. And Grass Knot is a great move as well to run 
so that you can hit things like Seismitoad. So, great Pokemon. Love this Pokemon. At number three, we've got Superior. Superior is not a Pokemon that I particularly enjoy design-wise. In fact, I don't really like the Gen 5 starters personally, but Superior has one thing going for it, which is Contrary, and I think Contrary uh, really made Superior go from completely unviable to rather good. Now, I don't think that in Generation 9, if Superior comes back, that it will remain as viable as it was in previous generations. Now, maybe this mm, will turn out to be untrue, and this prediction will be completely off, but my prediction is that Superior will not be OU in Generation 9 for two reasons. First reason is that if Hidden Power does not return, then Superior will be heavily limited in what it can do, especially because most Superior want to run Hidden Power Fire, and if you don't have Hidden Power Fire, you can't hit a lot of Pokemon, and you have no coverage really whatsoever. What do you have? Dragon Pulse? <laughs> it, it, Superior definitely struggles with a lack of coverage, and if you can get completely walled by Ferrothorn and Scizor, it's not a good look for you. The other reason is just from a general power creep perspective, I think that Superior's natural base special attack is so underwhelming that even after a Contrary boost, it's not really that impressive, and I'd rather use many more other special attackers, so I don't see Superior staying OU. But I do like Superior as a Pokemon, and one thing I do like about it is the ability to click Glare. Glare is my favorite Pokemon move, and I really like to be able to sit behind a substitute, click Leech Seed, click Leaf Storm, and Glare my opponents down. Very fun. In the number 2 slot is Electros. Electros is one of the most unique Pokemon out there. It is currently basically the only Pokemon left without a weakness if you factor in Levitate. And Electros is also endowed with a fantastic move pool. It has so many coverage moves on both the physical and special side. And even though its stats aren't the best distributed, and so it ends up in the lower tiers. In the lower tiers, Electros is a solid Pokemon. It also makes a great Pokemon to draft because it has such good coverage and is, you know, pretty decently difficult to take down because of its uh, lack of weaknesses. And then, in the number one slot, there's only so many Pokemon left on this list that it could possibly be, but I've chosen to have Meloetta be the number one Pokemon that I miss the most. You'll notice the absence of certain Pokemon, and that's okay, but for me, number one, gotta be Meloetta. Meloetta is a very interesting Pokemon because she can get into a pirouette form and pirouette form, however, requires the use of Relic Song and then you, if you switch out at any given point, you immediately fall out of pirouette form. So I don't really think that's a particularly good option. I prefer to stay in Relic form and to click a Calm Mind. I like the Calm Mind 3 attack set the best. It gives you the most coverage options, which you really, I think, you usually need to have all three coverage options listed here. And Culberberry is not the only option you can run on this set, but Culberberry is quite nice in case you need to hit a dark type uh, and it may be faster than you, or you may need to hit two, in which case Focus Blast is a pretty good option. So, a Meloetta, pretty, pretty cute Pokemon, pretty decently, well it's not decently strong, but it could be decently strong if it were in its pirouette form. And if it, we had a couple of changes to Meloetta, I think it would definitely be a lot better. Uh, it's such a unique Pokemon as well, and we haven't seen it around for so long that I feel like a lot of people may have forgotten that this Pokemon even existed. So I'm really looking forward to Generation 9 and hoping that it makes a return. In any case, uh, you may have noticed that the Pokemon that you missed the most isn't on this list. Of course, the other two Kalos starters, Greninja, Chestnut, those didn't make the cut. Uh, so if you have your favorite Pokemon that didn't make this list or another Pokemon, maybe even from BDSP, that you really want to see return to the metagame, uh, put it down in the comments and we can discuss those Pokemon down there. I'll talk to you guys next time.